other rules, which is AD202. But I'll mention to you, I welcome all of you to our new Center for Entrepreneurship, which has got various objectives and which will give you various inputs. And this center has got its own IDPC, which has entered the program. And of course, the contractor, Professor Atre, are the members on this committee, along with other faculty, which include Professor Chakravarti from IDC, Professor Shashikan, Professor Karandikar. So today, I just want to share with you that we have to create this new center and create this new IDPC. And Professor Contractor Professor Atre have been instrumental in doing this. And most importantly, these two courses which we have launched, the last one in the autumn semester introduction course and the present one which we are now started, the business for entrepreneurs, they have got the approval from CINE and it's a new program and new course which we are launched now. So I will request to the contractor to kindly talk about this and also give some idea about the requirement in terms of new academics. Uh, I am not really teaching this course, so I think Professor yeah. uh, 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 Raj will be the right person to talk about this. I am sure Raj has already talked about it. Uh, last uh, semester, when we started off, so we were keen that you know we should la launch the program uh, you know as quickly as possible and as promised to uh, the donor. Uh, so there was a little bit of uh, hiccup uh, in terms of uh, you know whether uh, the numbering of the course, the coding of the course, and uh, we were also pleasantly taken by surprise by the uh, tremendous response. Uh, we were actually expecting about 40 or 50 students, and uh, when we saw such a huge response, we didn't really also want to disappoint people, so we went ahead with it. Uh, but I think for most people it has worked out well, uh, uh, except for a few cases where, not where, where uh, you know they assumed uh, uh, a certain uh, sort of uh, credit implications. Yeah, credit implications, and uh, I, but I think that problem is uh, being solved. Uh, so right, uh, so the uh, idea of the center is to provide. Uh, sort of or equip students uh, or budding entrepreneurs or uh, you know people who are looking at entrepreneurship as a possibility to equip them with the necessary skills. So the IDPC has you know uh, consists of very successful entrepreneurs and uh, failed entrepreneurs because you know it's only the failed entrepreneurs who know, uh, you know what was missing. So I'm I'm the failed entrepreneur uh, and uh, I wish. You know, I had an opportunity to take a course like this before I launched my company. Uh, so, uh, of course, there are people like Raj, you know, who did it even without the benefit of a course like this in IIT. Uh, so the idea is that uh, you know those who are interested uh, across the uh, spectrum of students in the institute, including you know PhD students, would uh, be able to take some of the offerings. And some uh, students would also be able to uh, fulfill the requirements for getting a minor in entrepreneurship. Okay. And uh, the minor in entrepreneurship is going to be a little different from the other minors in the sense that uh, you know some real work will have to be done apart from attending lectures and uh, writing quizzes and uh, giving exams. <coughs> so I think uh, one important part of the uh, you know. Uh, on a minor program is the uh, proof of uh, concept uh, lab, and which uh, Professor Atri will talk about. I think Friday, next time, Friday. next time we will talk about it. Uh, so what we are looking at is, uh, you know, students uh, coming up with ideas, business ideas, <coughs> based on some kind of technology. <coughs> that technology needs to be, uh, you know, demonstrated or at least some proof of concept done as part of the course and then a business plan developed around it and some kind of strategy for marketing and uh, things like that. Uh, so I think uh, as far as uh, this semester is concerned, uh, I hope there are no sort of doubts about uh, the uh, 
course uh, numbers and the credits and the other implications. If there are any, then let us clarify. Any questions on the contractor? Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think just uh, one point before we start. I mentioned that uh, we started this program and the course. Uh, tomorrow is the last day for changing of course if people want. And uh, I see that on the ASC list there is a quite a few red marks against some of the names. Out of 214 students, 154 I think are okay. Our 60 students are in the red list. And out of the minor program, out of 40, 32 are I think already in the black. But eight are in the red list. So to find black? out the reason why you are in the red list, what is either the you are in red and black. The, uh, they require approval from their course instructor or their board faculty coordinator or the I think ASC has some issue on their qualification. So please take care of that. Check on exactly what is the point that you need to address, and Aparna and Shakti will help you in case there are any issues. So that from the Friday class, we will have everybody on the same platform, and we'll continue this. Black is worse than red. Black is right. Red is very compared to black. Everyone has to be black. Red is like your balance sheet. Yeah, and then, yeah. yeah. So don't be in the red category. Yeah. All of us will be in black category. So I think that's okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, you know, so really the goal
so basically, like, you know, I've been involved with the three startups over the last 25 years. And, uh, you know, two of the companies went all the way from one person, two people, the team of three to four people, all the way to, you know, public companies, and all the way to the prospectus over, you know, four to five years, basically. And uh, the third company, you know, we basically, the investors decided to kind of make it into a technology platform rather than a business source. So, um, just to give you an idea, you know, uh, <coughs> what the companies were, because those are going to be a case study which will help us understand how just a product <coughs> suddenly becomes a player in the marketplace and becomes something that can make your company very interesting, very valuable, and something that has, you know, a future. So, I've done three companies in totally different industries. Uh, the first one was a semiconductor industry. The second one was an enterprise software, business to business company. And the third one was a consumer product, like a, you know, a TV channel product. Uh, different kinds of funding. So, I've done angel funding, I've done venture capital funding, and all kinds of funding sizes, you know, uh, from less than a million bucks for the first company. Uh, to maybe almost $35 million for the second company and then about $15 million for the third company. So you can actually build a company which is, which is very successful sometimes with less money and smaller money. Sometimes you decide to have lots of money. You're fortunate because lots of investors love your idea, they want to participate in your company and you raise a lot of money. So how do you build a company when you have a lot of money? So on. And if you look at my customers, you know, it's varying from manufacturers, which are personal computer manufacturers for the first company, to the second company, which there were all the IT shops, you know, like the CIOs and the Google 2000 companies, and the third company, the third uh, company was all about consumers and the entertainment business. Products, again, components, chips. software and services, similar to Infosys and so on, but we also have technology and a product. And video distribution, very much like Tata Sky and, you know, all the other ones. Uh, work with all kinds of people. Uh, Chinese, my first company was 80% Chinese people, Taiwanese people. Second company was 50-50, uh, US and India. And the third one was, you know, 40% of uh, all kinds of business models with Opti, you know, we had less than a million dollars and as a consequence there wasn't much money to lose. So we never lost money. And the company was profitable from day one all the way to its IPO. So very, very profitable uh, company all the way. The second company we had so much money that it never made money. But, you know, it was a massive success. Uh, in the marketplace because you know, they, all the biggest customers use our product, there's a lot of excitement about the product, it solved big problems and uh, you know when we went public, this is what you can read in the prospectus, is a company that was worth five million dollars, which is you know flip card type of company, market valuation. Uh, and uh, I know the goal was current revenue model, which is a very difficult business model to build on. And uh, sometimes investors, you know, do get tired for different <coughs> reasons and, you know, then they can change the whole market direction from you know, business to just a technology thing. Anyway, so three different companies, but really the goal of all three companies is to take some technologies, some ideas, some vision, some breakthrough stuff that you know you created because you were passionate about it, and then how do you create a business around it? And creating a business around it is, is going to require becoming very good at marketing, becoming very good at sales, selling.
becoming very good at customer care, becoming very good at negotiating, uh, becoming very good at presenting, you know, and then very good at you know product development, lean product development, very good at uh, finance, managing the money, all of that, very good at managing the board of directors. So believe it or not, you're going to be very good at everything. This is going to require, you can't say I'm just going to be a mathematician. You're going to be somebody who's good at all the skills that I talked about. Especially, you know, uh, if you guys are going to be entrepreneurs, co-founders, the founding team that moves, makes it all the way to the top, right? Makes it all the way to uh, for the full journey. Now, so, so basically what we're going to learn today is the marketing portion. So let me first kind of uh, get through this slide because I want everybody to understand that, you know, creating a company, you know, after 25 years, I figured that what are the, I wanted to kind of crystallize it into things that were most important to building a company. Taking an idea, taking the first product, and then building the whole business around it. So, you know, I might, after thinking about everything that I did over 25 years, uh, these are kind of eight different things that I figured are the most important. There are the 50 things that are important, but these eight things are really the most important. Uh, number one is being responsive to the market. Uh, being responsive to the market, maybe I should ask a few questions. What's responsive to the market? Depending on its needs, adapting and developing, making the product better. Yeah. So what the buyer wants is what you get. Yes. Now, is a single buyer, does a single buyer make a market? Anybody? Yes. Hmm? Yes. A single buyer makes a market? Yeah. Very, very rarely. Yeah. If you only have the government as a customer, the single buyer. Can be a, can service your whole company's needs, but in general, uh, what does it take? What's a market? Yeah, I think you also. Yes, I really must like give you an example of something other than the government. Okay. It's like KFC, <coughs> they use specific kind of uh, who? KFC. Can you give it? Yeah. So they use like a specific kind of uh, uh, device in which they kind of fry the chicken, which is not a standard fryer. So that's just one company which is licensed only to KFC. Does that have we not sell any other products? Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, so that so that's so it's obviously for that company, KFC is not the only buyer. Right? So basically a market is a common need across many buyers, many customers, many people who got needs. Right? So a market is where, you know, say, say you go to Think of a market. So you go to a grocery store that sells vegetables, fish, you know, fruits, etc. And you know, so that's a market where some people go there for the fruit, some people go there for the fruit, some people go there for the fish, some people want a little bit of each. So basically you've got different kinds of buyers that constitute, you know, the market itself. So essentially, what you're looking to do is find, when you have your product, target it towards something where there's enough buyers who are going to buy the product so that you can build a scalable, repeatable, profitable business. Because a startup or a company needs to have these three characteristics, scalable, repeatable and profitable. So you've got to have a buyer wanting to buy the product over and over again. You've got to have a company where there are, if this one, this person is a buyer, this person is also going to be a buyer. There's a buyer in Mumbai, there's a buyer in Delhi, there's a buyer in Calcutta, there's a buyer in Taipei, whatever. So basically you're going to have an opportunity to build a scalable company and it should be profitable. 
cost of production is less than you know servicing the customer's need for the product, right? So basically, uh, when you create your product, it needs to be responsive to the market. You don't want to develop a product that only one customer needs, or you don't want to develop because what happens when the customer needs is satisfied? That's the end of your company, right? So. Uh, you don't want to be uh, somebody that uh, ta targets a solution to just uh, individual customer need and so on, but something that can, uh, services a broad, broader set of uh, customers, and that becomes a market. Uh, the second element uh, is something called fast product development, or lean, lean product development. And uh, you'll see over time, in a startup, successful startups are fast. They jump, you know, they are quick to, and they you know, if somebody comes, if, if, you know, a customer says, I'd like to have this, you know, customer thinks it's going to take one week, you work all night, and you deliver the product tomorrow. All of a sudden, you know, that's called, you know, fast product development. The faster you can do things, compared to how the customer's expectations are, compared to what, you know, uh, the competition can, can do, now you've got a chance of being successful. So fast product development. Obviously, great teamwork. We talked about that last time. It's all about finding a team working together to make it really successful. And you need to focus on that and some elements of that you know, over time. A lot of people don't understand
second thing, uh, fifth thing is lose the battle, not the war. The message here is that, you know, there's going to be continuous disappointment when you start your company. The product will be slower than you expect, the product will take longer than you expect, the engineer is not working hard enough, you know, the sales bill is not doing sales good enough, you know, the customer refuses to pay. There's a continuous series of disappointments that you face when you're running a company. And uh, you can lose heart when, when you're facing disappointment, disappointment, disappointment. And the leader, <coughs> and you guys are the leader, if you lose heart, then the company is That day, from that day, the company is over because essentially the rest of the company will lose heart even faster. And so, with lose the battle, the whole idea is that every time you lose, it's an opportunity to learn. It's like every time you make a mistake, you really don't blame yourself, you don't hit yourself with a whip or a stick. You basically say, okay, objectively, analyze, you know, what could I have done better? Could I have prepared? Could I have anticipated the needs? Could have gone ahead and figured out what needs to be done. So basically, it's losing the battle, not the war. So every loss actually ends up in improving your product because you built something. And if you keep doing this over and over again for one year, two years, three years, and your whole team does that, where they're continuously improving the product, suddenly one day you will wake up and find that. You have the world's best product. That's the beauty of it. Now, the day that happens, now you can go conquer the world. And that's when your product takes off, your sales take off, your uh, customers start talking good stuff about you, and you get the company power. Yeah. Investors start coming in, and that's so. That's where you want to get to, where everything has been improved, 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 polished, polished, polished. Polish, Fix, 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 till it becomes so good that anyways, you've got your perfect product. First of all, your customer relationships, you know, that's something you're going to learn is that you know, you know the product never sells itself. It's all about, it's all about people building relationships with each other. That's why people buy the product. Right? And then transparency and learn, you teach the team, we'll talk about that in a whole <coughs> Okay, so basically we are talking of marketing and we are talking of, you know, I just wanted to give you a quick summary as to what were the key marketing things that I did for each of my companies that resulted in a successful uh, outcome. So with Opti, basically I focused on a very targeted market development. I didn't go for the whole market. I said, let me target and come up with the best solution, price, product, price, delivery, all of these <coughs> things, get all of them right for one target market, succeed in that market, and then go to the rest of the market. So I did targeted market development. So with targeted market development, you'll see how you can actually <coughs> become the best in one area, that becomes your strong rule, just like in war. You can't conquer the fort. You didn't try to conquer all the flat area, you 